Doc Wackholz from Reverence, and you're watching the sound effect. Let's try this again. Thanks so much for watching. We appreciate you being here, and I uh, hope you can hear the mics this time. I don't know why we keep messing that up, but it is what it is. Thanks for watching. I'm Todd T. Riley. I'm Scott Johnston. And I'm Dee Johnson. And we are the sound, sound effect. effect. Minus the sound. <laughs> <laughs> we are the effect. <laughs> so uh, I've personally been looking forward to our uh, special in-studio guest tonight because uh, he's one of my favorite musicians in the Bay Area and actually one of my favorite local, my favorite local guitarist, actually, uh, singer, guitarist, Gary Shutt of the band Panic, Panic Fire. Fire. Thanks for being here tonight, Gary. We appreciate you. Hey, thanks up. again. Thanks, thanks for your patience you. with the uh, craziness around here. It gets, you know, we like to keep people on their toes. Yeah. I'm on my toes already. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't forget to uh, vote for our social media poll um, we got going on this week. Uh, it's going to be closing up tomorrow. I think we're uh, kind of looking at a, what could possibly be a landslide, but uh, you know we'll be discussing that a little bit later in the show. So stay tuned for that. And also a little later, we're going to be playing some videos from Gary, so you want to be be sure to check that out and uh, stick around for that. But first, let's uh, get into some music and entertainment news. So on January 28th in 1887, this is kind of cool actually, a snowstorm in Montana marked the world's largest snowflakes being 15 inches wide and 8 inches thick. Can you believe Crazy. that? That's not a snowflake. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> a snowball. <laughs> that's like man. A knock people out. <laughs> yeah. That's a thing? That, yeah, I, I that. never even imagined there could be the such a thing, man. You know, 8 we, inches thick, that's really just a ball of snow coming at you. And we're not going to talk politics, otherwise there's a lot bigger snowflakes out there than that now. <laughs> we'll just leave that one. In 1956, Elvis Presley's first appearance on national TV was the Dorsey Brothers stage show. And in 1978, Ted Nugent autographed the fan's arm with a knife. You ever do that before, Gary? <laughs> no. That's on my bucket list. <laughs> Sounds painful. Yeah, we still do it. You should have done that Instant to the one tattoo. chick, the, the drunk chick. And Which your, your one? drunk video. <laughs> yeah, right. It was like video was two like or something. The one skinny chick that was all dancing and wasted uh, in front of you. She was a mess. She was hilarious. Yes. I watched. I actually ended up watching the whole thing because she was so entertaining. And no, you were entertaining. At, that's at his website. Yeah, I just, he streamed that live on Facebook, right? I did put it on Facebook once, yeah. but if you if you subscribe to my Shutter Productions YouTube channel. That's what's that on there. <laughs> that was hysterical. January 29th, 1595, William Shakespeare's play Romeo and Juliet is thought to have been first performed, officially published early in 1597. And in 1845, Edgar Allan Poe's poem The Raven was first published in New York City. January 30th, 1920, Walt Disney starts working as an artist with KC Slag Company and get this for only $40 <laughs> a week. <40 bucks. laughs> yeah. That's crazy. And just imagine the amazing you know, thing that he created throughout that. I mean, just an empire. I know. I mean, you know? In, in me getting 40 bucks a week now is a tough thing. And, you know, back I know. Then, you know, we could stretch a lot farther. I know. Back, back then in the 1920s, you're going, sweet, I'm getting 40 bucks a week, man. 1933, The Lone Ranger began a 21-year run on ABC Radio. That was cool because back then, they actually did everything live in the studio. So it was like a stage play being Definitely acted out the live. Definitely fully artist sound effects. You know? mm -hmm. like. Yeah, yeah, they'd have somebody in there doing sound effects and everything, and everybody would be standing up, reading their parts into microphones and, and acting it out live, which is really, really a cool thing when you think about it. January 31st in 1865, General Robert E. Lee was named Commander-in-Chief of the Confederate Armies during the U.S. Civil War. And in 1948, magnetic tape recorder was developed by Wireway, so then we got our tapes. <laughs> got to record the tape. February 1st, 1950, Green Bay Packers founder, player, and coach Curly Lambeau resigned after 31 seasons and six NFL titles that's to his credit. 31 seasons, wow. Yeah, that's a long time for a coach. That's, that's pretty cool. In 1992, slugging outfielder Barry Barry Bonds signed the highest single-year contract in Major League Baseball history at $4.7 million with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Can you imagine making that much money in one year? No, no, Walt Disney makes 40 bucks a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think that was the same year. Oh, no. Not the same year, but I mean. Nowhere near the same, but... <laughs> 
2004. <laughs> The wardrobe malfunction. Janet Jackson's breast is exposed during the halftime show of Super Bowl 38. Uh, good times. It was a publicity stunt. No. <laughs> I don't know what it was a publicity stunt. Well, maybe it was. I mean, yeah, I'm sure it probably was. It had to be really embarrassing, but whatever, right? So, In front of millions so of people. Who are we saying happy birthday to? We have a, happy birthdays this week. Uh, January 28th, Alan Alda. You know him from MASH. MASH. He's 83 years old. Elijah Wood, best known for portraying Frodo Baggins in the Lord of the Rings film trilogy, turned 38. Cool. And on the 29th, Tom Selleck turned 74 today. And Oprah Winfrey turned 65 today. Of course, everyone knows who she, who she is. She was known for her talk show, The Oprah Winfrey Show, which was the highest rated television program of its kind in history. And she's the richest African American of the 20th century in North America first black multi-billionaire. She was ranked with the, as the greatest black philanthropist in, I can't even say that, in American history. She also has been sometimes ranked as the most influential woman in the world. I believe that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of talk that a lot of people think she should run for president. And if she yeah. did, I think she would, you know, I Hillary, it, you can step up again, you're going to get crushed this yeah. time. I, I think if she, would be crazy. I think if she ran, it would be a landslide. It would be kind of scary, though. Not only is she, she's I black, think. she's... <laughs> I mean, she's Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. You know, I mean, people trust what she says. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think she anything. would actually probably do really good, too, because she came from extreme poverty. I'm not talking about just being poor, right. but I'm talking extreme poverty to go on to be one of the most loved women in the entire world, you know, and she's got a good heart. She, she knows what it's like to be dirt poor, and she knows what it's like to drag out of that and become yeah. somebody great, you know. Only in America. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Also, Eddie Jackson, also known as Ed Bass, bassist and co-founder of Queensryche, 58 years old. My favorite wow. band. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> what? No, that's they're not vocal. <laughs> We're cool. Hello. And tomorrow, January 30th, we have Gene Hackman, he's 89, and Phil Collins, drummer and singer of the band Genesis and solo artist, he's 68. There's, oh, okay, Thursday, January 31st, <laughs> Justin Timberlake. Yes, he turns 38. Wardrobe yeah. malfunctions. <laughs> yeah, right. going to cause it. Yeah, the guy <laughs> caused the wardrobe yeah. malfunction. Then Whoops! He, <laughs> unless, you know, but he was he was on what? Was it last year's Super Bowl? Was yeah. It? Yeah. I well, thought he did a really cool job. What did you no, think he, of when he, he, he didn't did? See it. You didn't see it last yeah. year? You didn't see the performance he did of the Prince? And the, it was uh, actually really Prince. good. It was yeah, really, really good. Really cool. I respect him as an artist, and I would probably check it out if I remember to do so. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Uh, what was cool when they did that was um, they showed an upper shot of the city in the, the dome, mm -hmm. and they had this massive outline in lights of Prince's symbol with the dome right in the middle nice. there. It was a really cool thing. It Wasn't it the year prior that Lady Gaga did her thing? Yeah. I saw that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, was cool. good. That was, that was amazing. Good. That was a great yeah. performance, yeah. We also, for Friday, February 1st, Michael Campbell, Guitar, songwriter, and record producer, and member of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers is now with, and now with Fleetwood Mac. is 69 years old. They're coming to town. Fleet, Fleetwood Mac is coming to town. Yeah. You know, they're on tour right now, but I mean, they're coming to our local area yeah. here. The, yeah. Lisa Marie Presley, the only child of Elvis and Priscilla Presley, as well as the sole heir to their father's estate, turns 51. And Polly Shore is 51. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Harry Styles of One Direction turns 25. Styles made his film debut in Christopher Nolan's war film Dunkirk in 2017. That was a great movie. He did an excellent job in that. I didn't see that. that. He did didn't a fantastic job in that. What was that about, basically? Uh, it was about a bunch of uh, soldiers, uh, English troops, that got stuck oh, okay. in in that city, in that area, and had to cross the channel and stuff, and the boats didn't come, and they were getting attacked while they were on the beach waiting to get on the boats to go home hmm. and stuff. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see that either. To be yeah, it's really a, a great movie. So it's a great story. It's a true story. Is it on so, Netflix? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> it might not be yet. I don't but think it it's on be. Netflix. It might be out there. So, okay. so we, you know, we, as far as uh, we had some deaths this week. I mean, a couple, couple major uh, NASA catastrophes. I mean, on yeah. January 28th, 1986, uh, 10th flight of the space shuttle Challenger. I mean, it broke apart. It's like uh, 73 seconds into flight. Wow. You know, this killed you know, killed all seven crew members, uh, including was a, the first teacher actually uh, to become a, an astronaut. 
um, and that was a 37-year-old Krista uh, McAuliffe. Um, you know, also uh, February 1st, 2003, there was a second fatal accident uh, space, uh, from the space shuttle program, and that occurred, with, uh, that occurred when uh, the space shuttle Columbia actually disintegrated, re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. And that, and that killed uh, all seven members as well. So, I mean, you had uh, you know, two, two major uh, NASA well, malfunctions. Teacher, yeah, all in the same week, too. I mean, obviously, you know, years apart, but within the same week, the, the only two major things that happened like that. In fact, uh, I was just at NASA last year, and they have a, a new section there that honors both of these flights and the Challenger and the... Uh, the Columbia, and it's actually got parts of the ships there and all the uh, people that died, the crew members that died. It's got a memorial to each one of them and stuff, which is it's a really it's cool so thing to see. You know. No, I, I wasn't watching live when that happened, but uh, I was actually watching live in, in school, actually, when when the first one happened. And I mean, it, it, yeah, well, that was a huge thing. I mean, tons of people were watching live on that. You know, I was at very, home when the first one happened. Very Thank first, you. you know, teacher to ever go into space. That was some major news and stuff. She wasn't an astronaut. She was just getting a ride in, into space, which is a cool thing. Mm -hmm. And so I was watching that, and all of a sudden, 73 seconds into it, boom, and you're like, whoa. You're kind of like, that yeah. just happened? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, wow. It's unreal, unreal. So. Kind of, you know, kind of freaky thing you know you hear later is that they didn't die it supposedly yeah. they did not die from that yeah Some of them they actually did. died was... from the impact when it when it hit the water uh, you know supposedly really? I yeah mean, yeah but... that's what i heard that some of them did not die from the explosion but the impact of them coming down and smashing oh, into the geez. water killed i never that heard horrible? that that's terrible so, yeah. yeah yep yeah that's it's pretty wild so I'm going to do something here that you don't need to normally do in broadcasting, and, the, and that is uh, recommend that we give a brief moment of silence in honor of these astronauts. It's usually bad news when you say dead air. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. But. And I wasn't going to do my cricket sound during that, just because you, know, that, that, you can. Not, that doesn't. You can do it now, though. No, I don't want to do that. I mean, you, you know, usually <laughs> I first came up with a cricket sound. You know, when you when you try, you, you're trying out for a, a, a new a new venue, and you, you're forced to play on a Wednesday. And how's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing great, doing great. That sounds very familiar. Yeah, just been there, done that. I know that well. Been there, done that. Um, now, you know, you know as, as far as more deaths go, um, 1908, uh, Sidney Pagnet, uh, that's Sherlock Holmes, died at age 47. Uh, in 2009, Billy Powell, an uh, American uh, musician and keyboardist for Leonard Skinner, he, he died at age 56. Um, on the 29th, uh, today, uh, Freddie Prince, uh, comedian, actor, uh, Chico and the Man, he you know, he shot himself. He was age 22. Now, so you know, unfortunately, uh, this just happened today. Um, uh, legendary soul uh, crooner James Ingram died today. You know, he he had a career uh, eight top 40 hits, uh, two Grammy wins, um, you know, 14 Grammy nominations, and including Best New Artist. Um, multiple Oscar and, and Golden Globe nominations. Uh, you know, 1982, uh, he, he had a single with uh, uh, Patty Austin, Baby Come to Me. It was pop, uh, popularized uh, by General Hospital. That went to number one. Uh, you know, it's on the Billboard uh, Hot 100. He died. He was at age 66. Wow. In the battle of Cancer. Yeah, he also uh, had a hand in writing a pretty young thing off of the Thriller album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, definitely, yeah. Sad thing. But unfortunately, Sad but that just music. that just happened today. That just happened today. Condolences to his family, yeah, and friends. Um, on the on the thirtieth, uh, Betsy Ross. You know, I hope hope you guys all went to school and learned about her. You know, <laughs> she's she made the first American flag. It was eighteen thirty six. She died at the age of eighty four. Uh, Nineteen forty eight, Orville Wright. You know, we wouldn't we wouldn't even have planes if it weren't for him. He died died at age seventy six. The the author of Winnie the Pooh on the thirty first died 
he would have been, well, he died at age 74. Um, it was back in 1956. 1956. Yeah. Wow. Um, February 1st, uh, 1988, Heather O'Rourke, uh, she died. She was, she was in a, a Poltergeist. She was a little girl. Yeah, yeah. She, was, she was a little girl, age 12. Wow. I mean, that, that movie seemed to have... Yeah, like, they, they said it was cursed. You know, there was a lot of deaths uh, the other sister with that. was murdered, you know, uh, several years later. There was a lot of really? weird deaths associated with that show, okay. with that movie. A lot movie. of stuff happened on the set and stuff. I mean, that was a... Yeah, it was crazy. Actually, I thought that was a pretty cool movie on Back I in the Day. It. yeah. You know, that was... That's a classic. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. So, uh, Miley Cyrus, her and more will perform at the Grammys this year, her as an H-E-R. A few years ago, Miley earned her first Grammy nomination at Best Pop Vocal Album Nod for Bangers. This year, she's returning to the ceremony, not as a nominee, but as a performer on Thursday, January 24th. The Recording Academy announced Cyrus will take the stage at this year's ceremony on February 10th, along with uh, R&B breakout star, her singer, Brandi Carlile, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Post Malone. That'll be pretty cool. Uh, Brian Singer, the director of Bohemian Rhapsody, is facing allegations of sexual misconduct with minors. Really, dude? Come on. Yeah. On the heels of Bohemian Rhapsody's two major Golden Globe wins, including Best Motion Picture Drama and five Oscar nominations, including Best Picture, Brian Singer, the film's director, faces fresh allegations of sexual misconduct with minors. Specific details have come from over 50 sources. Um, boys. Yeah, it's probably yeah. Singer has denied too. the accusations <laughs> and called the report a homophobic smear piece. Uh, in an interview following news of his Oscar nomination for his portrayal of Eddie Mercury, Malik, who definitely deserves it, I think, told the Los Angeles Times that he didn't know much about Brian when he was preparing for the role. I also, think, around this time... I think they fired him at the end of it, but they, they still had to give yeah. him all the credits. Yeah, they hired someone else. Also around this time, in December 2017, Singer was hit with another lawsuit alleging sexual assault of a minor, which he accused the accusation he swiftly denied as well. So, I don't know. There's got to be something to it when you get that many people coming forward. Crazy I, when I people get so. power and what they think they can pull off. You know, you know I, don't, I don't like talking about, you know, who's dating and, and you know, rumors and this and that, but... Boy, so listen I, I up, just, girls. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, I just had to go there last week. I'm like, you know, did, you know, Brad Pitt was uh, dating uh, Charlie's Theron, and uh, I guess that turned out to be false. So I don't even I know. know. I probably won't go in that direction again. I mean, um, Michael Clayton just, was right. Saying I got a chance Michael with Clayton Charlize. was right. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> you have a chance. <laughs> you, you could. I mean, I I don't know. Um, you know, Custom Offender, Custom Shop is releasing a limited edition of Jimmy Page's famous Mirror and Dragon Telecaster model. Now, this is, uh, is going to celebrate the uh, 50th anniversary of Led Zeppelin, uh, Jimmy Page's uh, story, his career. This was, this was like his icon guitar, yeah. icon guitar. Um, Fender will release the, the fourth artist signature guitar models, you know, throughout uh, 2019. Uh, so give uh, fans and collectors a chance to just have, have you know own their own piece of history. Um, you know the two models uh, made of Fender's production lines will uh, um, to be dubbed the limited edition Jimmy Page Telecaster set. Um, you know Jeff Beck was was the one that originally uh, originally gave him this. I mean it was it was uh, he gave it to him for uh, recommending him to the Yardbirds. Yeah, and, uh, that's pretty know, cool. I mean, that, that makes some major history going from one incredible guitarist to another like that. I mean, you know, well, he he customized it. He, he added uh, uh, eight circular mirrors to the body, and then uh, by uh, mid nineteen sixty seven, just ready for a change in look again. So he removed the mirrors, uh, completely stripped, repainted the instrument himself, and uh, this time he hand painted the mystical dragon on the body. You know, so Led Zeppelin. I mean, they were they were formed back in 1968. Yeah, uh, 1968. Um, you know, the Dragon Telecaster uh, became his go-to instrument, and uh, you know he he played it all the time. I mean, all the time on the stage, played it in the studio up until 1969, and you know it's the main the main guitar he used. I mean. Uh, Especially on Led well, the Led Zeppelin one. one album. It was also the guitar that he used on the solo for Stairway to Heaven. 
Okay. I was reading more about it and stuff, and I've actually seen pictures of it. It looks pretty cool. I wouldn't mind having one myself. Limited edition. So. I just found a picture of that because that rang a bell. I was at. Yeah, did you see it at NAM? I was at the NAM show. That's it, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the mirrored one, right? Nice. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Very neat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Michelle Gandhi had a question. Said she wanted to thank you, Gary, for helping with Ozzy and Dr. Paul's St. Pete detour. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Cool, let's check out what events are going on and then talk to our guest, Gary. So the 2019 Florida Full Throttle Motorcycle Expo and Bike Builder Invitational is happening at the New Birds Barracuda Harley-Davidson at 49th Street, right across the street from Quaker Steak and Lube. That's on February 7th through the 10th with 12 bands total playing, seven national bands, including on Thursday, uh, Miss Intent and Brian Howe, former lead singer of Bag Company, is going to be there on Friday the 8th. Comfort Zone, Love and Revenge, Autograph, and Lita Ford. And on the 9th, you're going to see Monkey Bone, Jasmine Kane, Vic and winger that'll be a cool night and then sunday the 10th uh, soul circus cowboys and jack russell's great white will be there things are getting kicked off on wednesday the 6th with their bike night expo pep rally from 6 to 10 and the sound effect is going to have a tent there this time we will be there getting some interviews for the show so stop by and say hi be sure to support all of the event sponsors while you're there and you can find out more about the info or info on the event and their sponsors on our Facebook page. We're posting stuff on there and promoting it there as well. So uh, check it out. We hope to see you there. It'll be our very first live appearance and stuff. Aren't you playing like right before that? I'm not playing any Quaker Steak or anything? Like the night before, like that Wednesday? The I, I should know this. You should know that. Uh, no, I played at Quaker two weeks ago okay. on, a, on a Wednesday. I thought I saw something about well, that. Well, I know you're playing on the Could 16th. I know you're playing on the 16th, your, your, uh, your Ozzy tribute band. Yes, that's down in Sarasota. That's at Diary that's of, a, of an Oz man. Thunder by the Bay bike, bike rally. Yeah, totally you're playing different. with Steelheart, though. Steelheart's after us. Okay, that's, that's, that's going to be a good show. Yeah, it should yeah. be really opening for show. you, man. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> you guys know that Super Bowl 53, the big game, Super Bowl 53 is on, on the third Rams, Patriots, you know this is uh, that's going to be in uh, it's going to be in Georgia, in Atlanta. The halftime show is going to have more than five. Yeah. Travis Scott, and a big boy. I mean, you know, hopefully this is a hopefully this is a good halftime show. Yeah, this should be um, pretty cool. Maroon Five's a good band. I like you know, we got uh, you know Seven Dust. And we've been talking about them coming to town. I mean, they're they're playing throughout the state. And, you know, they're, they're going to be here in our local area on, on the 5th at Janus Landing. Um, you got Saving Able. They're playing in, in Lakeland on the, on the 8th. I mean, you've got a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff happening. Um, Aaron Lewis is coming. Um, you know, we mentioned Fleetwood Mac earlier. Right. They're, they're coming this month. Um, actually, on the 21st, Gary's band Panic Fire will be performing with Jeff Scott Soto. At the Orpheum yeah, in Tampa. Awesome. That's yeah. obviously you're going to want to check that Definitely out. Definitely love to see that. that one. You've got tickets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't miss that. I've got tickets if you need tickets. And it's the, uh, I get to be in the same bill with my former uh, touring bandmate. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah, that'll Very be a cool. really great Very show. Cool. Jeff Scott said it was killer. He is killer. He's, really He's killer. amazing. Now, you know, yeah. Tesla's on tour. I mean, they're, you know, they're love coming, Tesla, over, coming over to uh, Orlando near the end of the month. Um, also, uh, on the 23rd, Saxon with War of Thrones, their yeah, friend uh, Mr. Wade Black, they're, they're yeah. playing at the Brass Mug. That's Wade and Rich, show. that's cool. You know, actually, they just got announced um, this really big major festival over in Switzerland that they're going to be yeah, they're, playing. Yeah, they're going to, going to Europe, going overseas. Yeah, yeah. so that's they just cool. announced that. That'll be really cool, too. So. Um, Queensryche's coming at the end of the month, too, I think, aren't they? Yeah. Queensryche. I want to see that. I love Queensryche. So, I mean, are they? Where? So you With guys, Fate's warning, they're playing at the Plaza Live in Orlando. 
Oh, I have that marked. So, I got a gig that night. Queens Rake and Fate's Warning. That'd be a great show. Yeah. So I mean, obviously yeah. these bands are all touring around. I mean, you know, you know, check them out locally. You know, whether it's Ticketmaster, uh, here you're gonna want to you're gonna want to look at the you know Amelie Arena, uh, Ruth Eckert Hall. You know, be sure to check the websites. That way, you know, you know exactly the date they're playing and all that right, good right. stuff. But, um, so tonight we got in studio with this singer guitarist Gary Shutt of the band Panic Fire. But uh, before we chat with him, we want you to enjoy one of his videos. This is A Million Miles an Hour. How does that song go? I won't bathe, I won't bathe, I won't bathe for you. With a million dollar bill and no way to make some change I hope and pray for tunes Alright, let's do this
There you go, man. Gary Shutt. Gotta love it. Million miles an hour. Love that video. It's cool. That was awesome. Thanks. We have some comments on that. Yeah. People it's a pleasure are... having you in the studio. Tonight, it by is. The way. Thanks, Thanks for having me. You're welcome, man. No, I love that video. It's like, it was like, it just happens to be one of the first ones that I saw. Mm. It's, it's a well done video. It's a good song. I mean, you, you did this all in house yourself? I did this all I mean, in my living room in my house. I don't think it cost me a cent. Ex oh, wow. Except Damn. for some it's of the, so retro, some of the costumes. <laughs> Great ending. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. That was that cool, man. Good. And I mean, you, you know, usually when if somebody's doing it in, you know, in house and they're in front of a green screen, I mean, well, you know, back in my day, I mean, you know, media production class back in high school, it looked it looked horrible. I mean, it was so <laughs> amateur. I I think everything looks really good. Thanks. Yeah, you, you know, good really job. good. Yeah, you really did a good job putting yourself in the uh, cockpit of the uh, spaceship. Took a lot of time to do that. Yeah, yeah. Even just to think uh, of the idea, be, go with it, be creative, because that is kind of off the wall. <laughs> Very, yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. You said, <laughs> so you, you said you were spoofing your own song there in the beginning. I did. Yeah. Um, the very first, um, the opening scene is 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 me, the 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 crazy astronaut that hijacks a space shuttle to go out in the middle of the universe and, dra and tow this asteroid to Earth and try to de destroy the Earth and. I don't have any music with me. Yeah. So I'm trying to remember how the song goes, and I'm just singing the wrong lyrics to it. <laughs> wow. That's great. Yeah. I love you. And there's actually more so. to it, but I like wrote out half the song. And I was like, I only have enough time to do this. So that's, that, that's actually ha half of what I had come up with. And there's, there's some weird lyrics. Now, I want to ask, I mean, about the, the song itself. I mean, is that's all recorded at your house as well? Yeah. Man, yes, it's, it great. sounds That's spectacular. Great. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah, we were talking about that when we were listening to your, uh, your checking out your videos and stuff and listening. We were curious if you do a lot of your own recording and stuff like that. And actually, very, very impressed with Thanks. the quality of your recording and doing it out of your yeah. house. That's fantastic. I've been bro. recording in my house for probably 30 years. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive, man. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, you got solid quality stuff, man. Thanks. Yeah, great. Great. Another another thing I notice is you know in some of your stuff you you're playing all the instruments. In all most instruments. of my stuff, I'm playing everything on it. Only yeah. my Lost for Words album, which is all instrumental, it's like it's like my Joe Satriani kind of stuff. Right. That's that's the only one out of all of my albums that has guests on it. Oh. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, because I I know we were we were watching a couple of the videos and it's like that that looks like Gary. No, he's got tattoos. He's got tattoos. No, that can't be. Yes. That was you. That yeah. was yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. tattoo sleep shirt. That was yeah. you, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what they're, I thought. <laughs> they're fake sleeves, so I try to, you know, I do everything myself, but then I try to make it look like it's still different people and right. it's a band. Cool. No, that was very impressive. Very, very impressive. impressive. So you said there's a couple of comments? Just basically, they said it was very cool, 70s graphics, great sound. Somebody said you used iMovie, I bet. Oh, Final <laughs> no. Cut Pro. Oh, there Final you go. Cut Pro. Okay. Yeah. Uses the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. That's awesome. Cool. Very cool. Very, very cool. So what blows me away, man, um, so your dad was a cat skills jazz drummer, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. And you I started out on drums because he had, the, he had the kit in the house. We had a drum set and a piano. It, in the house. That's how I started on both of those. Um, the guitar and singing came much, much later. Yeah, I mean, that was quite a bit later that your singing actually came along, right? No, my singing, well, yeah. That you actually became like front man and, and doing Before I became it, good at it. Yeah. Because I, I got some old demo tapes of me in high school and I was horrible. I mean, you you, you, you back up vocals them, right? and what yeah. lead. Ken Tamplin. <laughs> Ken Tamplin is God, yes. Yeah, he's <laughs> that he trained you. <laughs> Did yep. you get some training from him? He gave me some tips. Awesome. Yeah. 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 He's he's a phenomenal singer. He's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I, I watch some of his videos online, you know, tips for singing and stuff. He's spectacular in the way he presents himself and the way he presents and talks to you about how, how you can sing. everything. Mm -hmm. It's excellent explanations. Everybody and stuff needs like that. to go to his page and just watch yeah, everything. Yeah, Whether yeah. you think you know what you're doing with singing right, or right. not, just go because yeah. you, you're going to learn something. Yeah, yeah, he really knows his stuff. And I got to tell you, man, yeah, I, you know, fantastic vocals you got, bro. 
Thank you. Very clean Thank voice. You. No. Nice. Appreciate that. We have kind of a loaded question. Michelle Gandhi asked, if, said, you shred the guitar. Do you have a favorite brand? <laughs> I endorse Atomic. Okay. Um, they're not that well known. Uh, I met them back in the NAMM show, I think, eight, eight years ago. That was, that was the only time that they had a booth, and we had some mutual friends, and I played in the booth, and I became friends with them since. And uh, I, I currently have three that I rotate, like fully okay. custom stuff. It's like, I want this kind of wood, I want this shape, I want this bridge, I want, I want this and this and that. Is your Star Wars one of those? Yes, it is. <laughs> Love that yep. guitar. Yeah, Red 5. Yeah. Um, they've, been, they've been making custom stuff for the guys from trans Siberian Orchestra and Joel nice. from oh, okay. Whitesnake and, and the guys from the last 20 years when I see him. I, I did a background gang vocal session. Right, and he was he was he was one of the one of the guys there. And at the time, he told me he he was in a band called Majesty, which is what Dream Theater was called right. before they right. changed their name. So that is confirmed that I did a vocal session with Mike Portnoy. Very cool. Like 1986, my first year there. Very cool. Do Very that cool. math. 86. Yeah, <laughs> it's a couple years ago. A couple mm -hmm. years ago. So I mean, you 33 years ago, man. <sighs> yeah, you had to do the math. <laughs> you had to do it. I don't want to so do that math. <laughs> so I mean, you've you've played, you know, you've you've played a lot of places, played around. Um, How'd you, know, you get hooked up with Jeff Scott Zotto? After I graduated Berkeley, I moved back into my dad's basement because I had nothing going on, and Jeff was trying to put a band together that was a combination of Van Halen and Prince. Oh wow! He yeah. wanted something that was heavy rock, grooves with choruses, but a bit of a R and B uh, flair to it. Very cool. And John John Finn, who was one of my professors at Berkeley, got a call from Jeff's drummer, who was in the Boston area, recommended me for the gig, and we nice. got hooked up th through the phone. He sent me a tape. I sent him a tape. I asked my parents for some money to fix up my car, and I said. I have to do this. I want to go to Los Angeles and be in a band with the former singer for Ingve Malmsteen. And please, can I have some money? And they were like, they fixed up my car. They said, here's here's some extra stuff. And I, I had a I had a 1977 BMW that my grandfather gave me oh. when I graduated college. So it was it was kind of a piece of crap car <laughs> yeah, yeah, by that yeah, time, yeah, yeah. but still I had to brag and write, so I, I got a BMW. I got a BMW. I, I, I packed up as much as I could in that thing, and I, I drove from New York to LA, wow. Wow. auditioned, I got the gig. It didn't, it didn't go anywhere, because that's when Alternative was taken off, and yeah. all of the labels, I mean, oh, we did guitar solos. We man. did, like, like um, Record company showcases for like almost every major label, and nobody wanted us. It's oh, unreal. Yeah. It's I, unbelievable, I, I, man. I thought the stuff was great. I, I was like, I, I can't wait for this to take off. This is going to happen. The songs are cool. Jeff is a great front man. The band is amazing. Yeah, I bet. and just nobody wanted it. Now replaced. You got replaced with you no know, guitar solos. People recording, not even. Fully tuning their instruments. People I mean, dressing like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's a shame too, because Jeff's he's my favorite singer from Ingve by far. Mm -hmm. You know, just he's if that would have landed a little bit singer. sooner, if it was like think. five years sooner, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's Terrible. crazy. We yeah, have quite a few bad. questions people are asking. Well, what do you, <laughs> Getting what do we all got? busy. Uh, Mike Pantishine, is that how you say it? Pantishine? Panchism. Pan okay, Panchism. wow, I was way off. I'm sorry, I had to say who right? it was. Right? Did I get that right, Mike? Panchism? Okay. Yeah. okay, he said he literally grew up listening to Gary back in the old days. He is Very a master. Cool. Very cool. Nice. Michelle Gandhi asks, what is your favorite part of being in a cover band like Diary of, a, of an Osman? That's a tribute band. That's a different thing. Let's get that straight. Well, what, if, if you watch the movie <laughs> Rockstar. Right. We're not a cover band, man. We're, We're a tribute, tribute band. band. Okay. <laughs> Diary of Alvin Osman is a tribute band. So what is yeah. your favorite part of that? My favorite part is that it's the closest thing that I'm going to be to actually being in Ozzy's band. Okay. <laughs> I get to be Randy, Zach, Brad, Jake, and Tony all in, all in two hours. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, that's pretty that's cool. cool. Yeah, and your singer, man, just spot on. on, on he's Ozzy. pretty good. Yeah, he's really yeah. good. He's got the look and everything going really, really well. 
So, yeah. Packs the place <laughs> out, too, man. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you guys always pack it out. So yeah. You do a great job. Always. So, it's always fun. Yeah. So uh, the rest of you guys in Panic Fire play with you in that, right? Yep. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. That's the good thing about that is that we can, we can open for ourselves. And nice. And right. Not have to hurry up to tear stuff down so that the other band can set up and play. Once we get there, we set up, we sound check for us, and then we do our set, take a complete break, don't have to move a thing because my mic yep. goes over to Ozman. Right. So the, the sound guys don't have to do any extra work. Nice. And That's then nice. take a break, we come back on, and then we do a two hour Ozzy show. Huh. Sweet. Very cool. Sweet. Very That's cool. cool. So, is he going to do uh, anything special for the biting of the head of the bat? <laughs> he gets rubber bats and. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> snort some ants and <laughs> oh, no. I haven't gotten him to do that yet you don't need to no. you, you gotta try man you gotta try <laughs> any other questions from from anybody in the chat room no not Gary right here? no any haters <laughs> no Michelle was just like sorry Gary for not so, for saying so, cover band that's okay I'm, I'm really <laughs> curious you know Berkeley being um, such a prestigious school of music well, what's the process of getting into that place? Money. Just like you get in and you have zero talent, you're in. <laughs> Seriously. Kind of. I wouldn't expect that. But that being said, it's not what you hear, you know. But by the time you're you've graduated, if you're persistent, you probably are pretty right. But that being said, if you have the money to pay the t tuition to get in, they have a 75 percent dropout rate for freshmen. Oh, wow. wow, do they really? That's because they hammer you hard can't, on the music, don't they? Can't do it. You're in, Just can't do it. If you can't it. handle it, if you see the guy, your roommate is doing this, <laughs> practicing along to a metronome, and, and you're, like, you're just going, oh, I can't even comprehend. G, G, what are you yeah, doing you'll here be again? Gone. You're, <laughs> out. you're out. You'll be going oh, fast. My God. So. What's, what's the curriculum like for college like that? What's what? What's the curriculum like for something like that? A lot of music theory. I can that. Um, it's a lot of. There's a lot of jazz theory. Mm. I had to take some jazz theory. I took a conducting course. It shows you how to hold the baton properly and count and cue, and you, you actually have to. You don't necessarily know how, know how to read the score, but you have to know where you are in the score, and then cue certain things that are coming up. So I okay. took a course in that. I took two semesters of Japanese because you have to take a language. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's and a tough language. And I ended up passing that with a D because I knew how to say th the phrase, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember what it was? I was like, <laughs> you find you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> so, more I got, though. Yeah. <laughs> you ever try to sing in Japanese? No. Oh, okay. Don't try. I can mumble in Japanese. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I can say, hi, what is your name? And I don't understand. Those are the two things that I got out of the class. It was a, it was a fascinating course, but I, I didn't remember much. It was really hard. Their alphabet is three different alphabets of 50 characters each. Wow. Wow. And we had to try and learn that. That's, That's crazy. No, I couldn't. We have some yeah. more questions. <laughs> fascinating. Marcus Lee said, what DiMarzo pickup did you decide to use? I haven't yet. <laughs> okay. Um, I was looking through the catalog and going through the specs on each, and so far I'm looking at a PAF Pro for the bridge. But the guy that I met at NAM wants to do a conference call with him and the guy and someone else. We're going to talk tones and who I like and what kind of sound I'm going for, and then... And then they can refer you to what they We're going to pick some things over the phone and then... Well, that's nice. We'll see, because I, I, don't, I don't have a neck pickup. I have, I, I have no, no idea of what I'm going to do for the neck pickup. Hmm. Cool. You just got an endorsement while you were at NAM, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Demarzio pickups. So, sweet. Mm -hmm. You want to hear why? Yeah. Seymour Duncan dropped me last year. Did they really? Yeah. Wow, really? I've had, I've had Duncan since 2003-ish. Wow, when, nice. I, when I started the tour with Soto, I reached out to a couple places that I wanted to get endorsements. Hey, I'm about to go on tour with this guy who sang for Ingve, blah, blah, blah. Can I, blah, blah. And I ended up picking up, at that time, Behringer, Duncan, Peavy, somebody else. I don't, I don't remember. So when I reached out to Duncan this past year to see if I was still a part of the family and I was, I was going to thank them on the credits for the new album, 
they reach back and they go, well, you need to reapply because our criteria has changed for artists. <laughs> to make a long story yeah. short, they ended up dropping me because I don't have enough Instagram followers. Oh, my oh, God. Wow. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. Jeez. So, okay, bye. Wow. And then uh, I was like, let's go let's, let's go to DiMarzio and just see because they're, they're the second other biggest pickup sure. company in the universe. And it just happened to be I had Harry from Atomic with me who also buys pickups to put in his guitars. Mm -hmm. He put in a word, and then the guy wanted, wanted to know about me. What I do, I told him about my band, I told him about the Ozzy band that always plays in front of people, and I used to tour with Jeff, and um, uh, the, the guitar player for Jeff, uh, Howie, Howie Simon, is also a user of their pickup, so there's names that we all know, and it's, it, he pretty much almost signed me right on the spot. Nice. Not, I wasn't expecting that. Congrats on that, man. So. Any any tips to people, you know, trying to get endorsements? You know, things to do, things to try. I mean, I've I've seen people get endorsed, and I'm I'm wondering, you played like four gigs last year. How did you get? You know, how do you? The more people that you play in front of, that's what they want to see. They want to know that their product is getting it in front of people. So getting some exposure. If you play in a, a cover band in Tampa for five people at the bar, they're not going to sign you. Right. But since I work with Jeff and that leads to this, and I'm playing with Ozzy that plays in front of thousands of people for Bike Fest. Right, right. That's, uh, and, and, and because I've had Duncan in the past, they're probably going, let's take this guy from Duncan. You know? Yeah. So, as a guitar player, probably your favorite endorsement is getting the free guitars, right? I never get free guitars. I don't think free you get guitars. free you get guitars discount. anymore. You get a you get discount. A discount now. On your guitars? I'm not an A artist. Yeah, yeah, that's um, true. Uh, the guitars I get at cost. Nice. Um, the amps from PV I get at cost. Uh, I don't have a string endorsement, so I, I still have to buy strings at Guitar Center. <laughs> um, what kind of strings do you, you like to play with? Diodario. Yeah. 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 That's, it used to be the, the brand that I played back in the mm. back in the eighties. Yep. You know, I tried a lot of different things and. I remember buying buying strings in bulk, and you know when I wasn't replacing all the strings, the whole set at once. That's when mm -hmm. I figured out it's like I, I still have E strings left over. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm the sure they have an X brace. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. I know the high E's break brace. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. These, these. Yeah, so we have a few more questions. Though, okay. Well, well, ask, ask, oh, yeah, ask the way. Michelle Govery said, "Ask Gary about the band that stole a song, Ha Ha Kidding, the Dear Funny Guy." Was that again? It said, ask Gary about the band that sold a song. Ha, 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 kidding. Quote, kidding? Alice in Chains. Oh, okay. <laughs> stole one of your songs? A Alice in Chains supposedly stole my song called F-O-A-D. Since I can't curse, I'm not going to tell you what oh, okay. F-O-A-D oh, yeah. okay. stands for. We, yeah. She was a friend of mine in, in Boston, and we ended up going to a Van Halen concert where Alice in Chains okay. opened, and she was friends with the drummer. We ended up hanging out with him. After the show, I had a tape of my song. I give them a tape to check it out. Next year, they, they come out with that Jar of Flies album, oh, and there's man. a song on there that's pretty influenced. Oh it seems like God. it's it's very close to my FOAD song. Wow. Oh, that's, that's, that's unfortunate. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Michelle Gandhi asks, who are your guitar influences? He's just trying to keep it going here. <laughs> Randy Rhodes, Eddie Van Halen, Brad Gillis, George Lynch. Yeah. Joe Joe Satriani, uh, Chris Broderick. <laughs> actually, I'm sorry. I like Chris Broderick. <laughs> Chris is great, but but he she's got a thing for him. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is a monster player, but he 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 wasn't right. one of my influences. Growing There's up. a lot out there. There's a lot of talent. These there. are the guys that I listen to constantly and just stole right. stuff from. Yeah, Lynch is my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. He's telling me they're 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 working on a third KXM album. Nice. Well, can't nice. can't wait for that. Yeah, that'd be really nice. Had a poll a couple of weeks ago, uh, Satriani versus Vi. Apples and oranges. <laughs> yeah, Apples yeah. and oranges. Personally, for me, I take Satriani. That's okay. Me too. Why? <laughs> he's bluesier. He's more melodic. He's more of a songwriter. Yeah. Vi is a fantastic showman. He's flawless, and he writes compositions. 
Right. That's that's a good answer. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. right. Very good. Steve Ives like it's like sound fireworks. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I can't say nothing bad about either of them. No, not but at me, all. But me personally, both, it's Satch. They're both cool. amazing guitars. It's mm -hmm. just more of what you prefer as far as the two is concerned. So mm -hmm. it's a tough tough call for that. Yep. So so cool. It wasn't until 1999 when you released your uh, Playthings that you started. Uh, so you wrote and performed everything on the entire album, right? Yeah, that That's was the first, first album. time you actually sang, right, as a singer? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, where it was something that it wasn't on a cassette demo. Yeah. Because the first album, Soto sang on because the Japanese record label wanted, wanted his name on it so that it would sell. Hmm. So did that album that you guys did together, that was uh, what the band called Slam? Is that correct? No, that wasn't Slam. It wasn't Slam? Jeff, Jeff never released the Slam stuff. He has... I was going to say, did you guys ever release anything? Did that ever get no. released? You showcased, but you never ended up... Whatever happened with... Uh, some of the Slam songs ended up as one-offs on the on either either one of his solo albums or on a Talisman album. There are like one one here and one there, but he, he, he never released the Slam stuff. Oh, okay. It's too bad. Yeah, it's too bad. Yeah, I'd love to hear that stuff. So Mike also wants to know what are some of your strongest songwriting influences, like your ideas, your structure, flow. Foo Fighters, Extreme, Van Halen. Uh, there's a band out of Sweden that I became a big, big fan of probably 10 years ago or so. They're called Freak Kitchen. <laughs> I've never heard of that. The guitar player is monstrous. <laughs> Just picture, picture like a Van Halen trio with like Dream Theater chops. Oh wow. Nice. Wow. Yeah. What a weird name though. <laughs> so I mean, you know, all the all the places you've played and, and all the things that you've done, I mean what what do you think is like the the best venue you've ever played at? Ever? Yeah. Yeah. Or show. Or or show or gig. You know, I mean My favorite gig was probably when I opened up for Rick Springfield at Ribfest twenty 2010. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. Cool. To play a Rick Springfield song? You can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. I'm going to show him how it's done. Now, what, what about the flip side? I wanted side to be in his going? band. Funny thing about that, um, the guitar player that he had then was in Slam. Was he really? Back in the day, yeah. That's funny. Yep. That is he funny. looks good, yeah. though. One of my friends took a picture with him the last, wasn't he here this past year? Yeah. And he looks amazing, isn't he? Like 70-something? He's, he's almost 70, 70 because he's he's a couple years older than Eddie Van Halen, who just wow. turned 63 or 64 this year. Oh, wow. Six, I think it's 64. Yeah. 64. Yeah. Okay. Now, on the flip side of the coin, you know, for, for fun, what what's like one of the worst venues or worst gig you ever you ever played? Oh, I was I was I was trying to think of that because I saw. Um, let's go to break and let me, let me think because <laughs> I really stop the musician. There's so many <laughs> crappy gigs I can't <laughs> I can't think of one that actually stuck out. A actually, probably it was either the first or second tour that I did with Soto. Our very last show that we did. After doing theaters, we did a festival. We had you know, 500 people here, 600 people there. We played what seemed like a church basement to like 40 people. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I hate when that happens. That's how you end the tour. Yeah, we're on a run. And we're and drinking vodka every night. We're partying. We're meeting people. We're taking photos. Dish. And then, and then, and then, <laughs> and then we, we walk in and we go, we made it. Okay, let's get this over with and go home tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. 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 That's funny. Yeah. Horrible way to end a, end a tour, huh? Yeah, downer. <laughs> Should be you didn't have anything with like the weather or just like nobody there or something like. Those were at my shows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's, you know, you can you can you be guys a big name and play. still have a crappy turnout. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. You know, I mean, some, what we were even Rob DeLuca was saying. You know, some of the some right. of the people he's played with. I mean, we won't mention names, but I mean, you know. The, you can have a crappy gig. I mean, it can happen. It doesn't matter how big a name you are, mm -hmm. you know, and Throwing a little tomatoes. bit harder to get into those shows. <laughs> sure. You know, I mean, yeah, you want to put on your best performance ever, but it's like, you know, the night before, you you can do anything in the microphone and everybody goes crazy. Now you're playing, and it seems like, man, I played better wedding gigs. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's nights where you're playing, but, like, someone else 
figures playing right down the street. Right. right. So that's where everyone's right. going Absolutely. there. Yeah. And, and you can't quite compete with that. You can't. So, yeah. no. we'll, we'll and then there's nights. There was a gig. I did a gig with uh, Disco Inferno 20 years ago. I had food poisoning that morning. Oh, oh. Uh, That was hell. Just moving and packing my... <laughs> the, the lead singer ended up driving me down to Sarasota for the gig, but just... You know how weak your body gets yeah. for food poisoning, right? Yeah. And with the Disco it. Inferno show, you know, we, we, we have the bell bottoms, we have the shirts, we got the wigs, so I had to get dressed. Oh gosh! And try to walk it in. Try to get on stage. Shoes. <laughs> Fortunately, they let me sit on a stool the whole night, and I had a bucket. Oh my god! Ready to go. <laughs> that probably is so, one of your worst. Venues. Fortunately, <laughs> I never took use of the bucket, but they were nice enough to let me sit on a stool so that I didn't have to stand the night. Oh so I, I'm on the stool, and then when we get to doing our, our dance moves, I'm on the stool just kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> just making it through and just feeling horrible. Oh so yeah, gosh. playing playing gigs sick is not fun. I I actually have thrown up on stage. Oh, <laughs> I hate to awful. do it. Uh, I did that too. You know, I mean, I, you're like visual I, effects. I, I never, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I actually nobody noticed how. Nobody I mean, I, you know, yeah, I had like a, a pitcher of water and I. I turned and you know the sour you know the high note just didn't agree with me. Oh no! <laughs> and I threw up in the pitcher. <laughs> Nobody knew about it until you know when everybody were tearing down and all of a sudden you know one of those the pictures, pictures. It's like, oh, oh what the hell? Oh, uh, <laughs> like yeah, sorry about that. And that well, I, had, I had a gig once where I I'd actually um, had gotten a cut in my elbow and uh, it ended up getting infected. And I thought it was healing up good and scabbing over and everything was good. And we had a gig down in Sarasota at, at a biker fest and I was a money shot. And um, this was before Scott was in the band. And uh, we went down there. I mean, when I woke up that morning, my arm was all puffed out really oh. bad. And I went wow. to the studio to pack up my gear and stuff. And they're like, what the heck, man? You need to go to the hospital. I'm like, nah, I'll, I'll be fine. Let's go. And I felt, totally like, I, I felt like I had the flu. Mm. Um, they're all like squeezing my arm to get the pus out. Oh, oh, man. So we go down to this gig, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm sitting on the back steps before they, we get on stage, and I'm just going, guys, I'm not feeling good. And they're like, come on. And I'm like, hold on, give me a second, man. The show must go on. And man. I ran over and threw up in the garbage can, and I came back. And I'm like, all right, let's do this. And they're like, now that's rock and roll. <laughs> oh my God. Come to find out, on the way home, my arm went numb, and uh, I had my friend drive me to the hospital. Angie was working there. Did you have like red line mm -hmm. thing? Yeah. Oh, um, I did? ended up oh, having uh, a blood infection and almost died from it. You they told me if I had though. not yeah. come in that night and I would have went home and went to bed, I wouldn't have woke up oh, in the morning. Wow. So I was that close to death Jeez. because of that. That's so. crazy. But I played. And they were like, dude, that was one of the best shows you ever played. And I'm like, <laughs> that's because I felt horrible. And, and I was really focused mm. <laughs> just trying to make it through the gig. <laughs> Yeah, that that one sucked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't ever do that Best again. Dedication. Yeah. No, yeah. No. Don't do that. Don't try that at home. Well, no. Gary, do you play any other instruments? And do you have any cool hobbies? <laughs> we know you play other instruments. Well, <laughs> the ones I play: drums, guitar, bass, piano. Uh, I dabbled on saxophone a bit in high school because my dad had one in the house. I never got that good, but at least I knew how to form with the reed and yeah. get some notes That's out of it but instrument. i wouldn't call myself proficient at sax or anything but um yeah just those four hobbies does xbox count <laughs> <laughs> in this day and age i think it actually does yeah. you, you ask any any kid of course it does you yeah. know yeah, yeah. you know you want to go out and play catch is that a game no. <laughs> well, you ride your bike, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I rode my bike from my house to the Tampa airport and back. That's crazy. It's amazing. I can't believe I did that. Were you exhausted? Like, you yeah. Like, taking a week off. Well, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't plan for it. It's like when you keep going, it's fun, and you're like, wait, I have to go back. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would say, you know, making making videos. I mean, I guess that would that would be considered a hobby, but, probably when you started it. If you yeah. want to look at it like that. I, I mean, guess it was a hobby when I started doing it because I wanted to learn about it. And I wanted to do it all myself rather than, rather than having to hire someone else and get my vision out to them and having to fight with the technology that they have. I wanted to learn everything myself. Right. So not only did I get the software and some of the cameras where I could do it and paint the green screen in my house, 
I'm, I'm one of those nerds that watches movies with the director commentary so that I learn how, oh, how, how they though, do yeah. all that right. stuff, too. That's cool. I like that as well. Very cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you could put uh, together the ultimate all-star band with anyone alive or dead and play in that band, who would be in that band? I got to play in it, too. You get to be part of that band. So what if, if I don't want to be the guitar with, player? If you can, well, you, you don't, don't have, have to be a guitar player because you play other instruments. You're, you're more than welcome to be the drummer. You the can bass. magically be the flute player if you want. I mean, this you know, is this so is hard your to vision. Do because that dream band already exists. They're called Sons of Apollo. Yeah. But I wouldn't fit in that band because they're just way beyond what I do. They don't need me. I'll be the tambourine player. <laughs> <laughs> you could always consider cowbell. I mean, that's pretty cool. Sure. More cowbell. <laughs> cool, man. That's awesome, brother. So uh, let's find out what's happening with the show poll. So what we had for a show poll this week is uh, who is the better guitar manufacturer, ESP or Jackson? Now, ESP has been around for a while. Jackson has been around for for a long time. You know, back in the '80s. I mean, they've you know obviously had, had they, they, there were a few different. I mean, you know, Chevelle was was yeah. uh, actually a, a guitar repair shop. They ended up buying them out. Um, you know, I know a Fender also. Um, you know what? I guess I guess I'm going with what I want already. I'm already tipping the hand. I I went with Jackson. I went with Jackson. I'm an I'm an '80s guy. I, you know, I like I like the sound. I like the looks. I like the paint job. All that. So I mean, Jackson was it for me. Jackson was it. Now I don't know if you'd even have an uh, opinion on that, D, since you don't really play guitar. No, I don't have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> you want to flip a coin then? <laughs> Well, so. if you could say what's fancier sounding. So yeah, which no. one do you think's fancier? Yeah. What was it again? PV and ESP? E e ESP or Jackson? Oh, Jackson. Well, I'd yeah. say Jackson probably just. For looks. Charvel, like Chris Oliva played that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. yes, he did. Absolutely. I would say that, but. How about you, Gary? As a guitar player, which one I've do you never prefer? played an ESP. You've never played an ESP? So, I, I, I did own a Jackson Dinky at one point. I'm going to go Jackson. Yeah. Well, i got to say I've owned both. Um, actually, the guitar that I probably play the most, actually, that I do play the most now is Jackson. However, um, the best guitar I've ever played was an ESP. Mm. And the best guitar I've ever owned was an ESP. Really? Scully. Never Why did I, I wanted it? To, I thought that was Scully a Jackson. It was an ESP. No. Really? Okay. It, it was a phenomenal guitar. It was from a custom shop and a one of a kind. And I made the big mistake of selling it to my old guitar player. Needed the money. Mm. The only guitar I've ever sold, and the one I regret the most getting rid of. You know, it's, I should have kept that one and Bill sold Hudson's some of my other ones if I was going to do that. Mm. Bill Hudson. But uh, yeah, I mean, ESP. Mm. My favorite guitar player plays him, George Lynch. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Queen Drake plays ESP. Yep. Metallica. You know, I mean, I could name a ton of people that play Jacksons too. They're both phenomenal guitars. They are actually both my two favorite guitars. ESP um, and, and ESP Jackson. And Jackson they're, they're my a lot of people favorite. like Schecter, right? So. They're like kind of more heavier. Schecter makes makes gorgeous stuff too. Yeah, yeah, they make yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Which which pickup is is Seymour's or in in Jackson's? Aren't they? they can, you can probably put whatever pickups you want in them, but I'm not sure which what they come stock with. For some, you know, because a lot of them were now. Pickups. When it comes to the lower end of the two guitars, mm -hmm. I have to say Jackson's by far a better guitar. Mm -hmm. I, I like it a lot better. Um, because you can get the lower end Jackson soloist that's got a neck through body and stuff, and you won't find that in the ESP LTDs usually. You know, right, right. And the higher end e t LTDs are, are good, but I think that the Jackson makes the the less expensive, the more quality, less you know, low expensive guitar. Okay. You know, they definitely do. But when it comes to the higher end, ESP is by far the best guitar I've ever played. You know, th this this poll is actually ending tomorrow, uh, tomorrow afternoon actually. But uh, I'm going to say, I mean, with with how Jackson this is going right now, and that, hey, I'm Jackson. I, 
Jackson's crushing it right now at 73 percent. So I have a feeling that they're gonna they're gonna end up uh, end up winning by tomorrow. Yeah, wow, yeah for sure. That's so that's pretty cool. Um, let's step into the spotlight and check out some more videos from our man Gary here. So originally we were uh, hoping to get Gary to perform here in the studio this evening. Unfortunately, that didn't work out. So <laughs> I feel like we're putting him on. I had, the spot. To, I had to rub it in. He just I got had to back give him a hard time. time. I know like, he just got back from NAM and, and you know, still trying to and sleep that's in. Cool. We, we appreciate you taking the time out just to be here, brother. Of the cool thing is we got a lot of really great stuff from you that we were able to play. So. Uh, Here's my personal favorite from Panic Fire, it's Lost Soulmate.
All right, so that was Panic Fire and Lost Soulmate, my personal favorite from the band. I just love the way that song kicks in and uh, just rocks it out at the end. So give us a story about that song there, Gary, in the video, man. Uh, do you want to get personal on this song? You know, I really yes. like the cat. <laughs> Honestly, I love the cat in there. You know, I love how you were... <laughs> That's right, I forgot the cat. You were there. doing the... Um, That's like the normal shot of the cat yeah. and all the other ones mm -hmm. got like... It looked like, like everything was really kind of shaky and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden this normal shot of the cat and then normal shot of the cat walking out stuff it was, it was that was that. actually very good editing i like that Thanks. a lot so that was actually heather's cat <laughs> <laughs> that's, funny. that's the same cat that stars in the um <laughs> he's a star um uh, play with kittens video oh yeah oh that's right oh my god one of my that's other hilarious. alter ego bands <laughs> nice <laughs> yes all that right that song was written about a girl i dated back in the 90s we had a very bad tumultuous relationship and then i bumped into her 10 oh. years later so that one moment <laughs> lyric in the song where it's like uh, a year to the day since i saw you last that's actually a true story and then, wow. and then i wrote that song oh yeah cool so the tuning on that song that's b in it it's actually a oh wow it's, that's wow it's actually it's actually um like 12 or 13 gauge strings Tune, tune down to B flat, so you got a B flat up on the E, and then you go down to the bottom string, where the bottom string is not B flat, it's A flat. It's, it's another old step. So it's it's a drop D tuning in B flat. And you're not wow. using a baritone guitar either. I'm using a standard Strat. Right. Wow. Yeah. So you have to set up the guitar for that? A bit. You have, yeah. you have to move the... the oh, that would just... The saddles back as far as they can go, the because it's, 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 it's not quite as long. So anything that's played up here is out of tune. Fortunately, I didn't have to go up that high, but everything that was, was down low, it worked out. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I love that. I just love the way that song is kind of softer and everything, but just kicks in nice and heavy at the end. So, yeah, it's great. So, one more thing about that one. The part where she smashes the laptop. I had an old Mac that died on me. I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> and I actually broke it trying to take it apart to get the hard drive out. Oh, shit. So that I could save whatever I could on it. And I ended up saving the whole thing. It's torn apart in pieces. So I have a, a new laptop that kind of looked like the old one. So when there's the scene where she's looking through the laptop, oh, my God, he's, he's a ghost and he's recording a song for me, but he's, but, but he's dead. And I can't take it. And she picks up the new one, cut to the old one, where she just throws it on the floor and falls into pieces. Nice. So that's the, uh, so the, the premise of the video, then, that's is a you prop. being a ghost? Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping you were going to say she grabbed the wrong computer. That would have been no. terrible. Like, <laughs> but actually, I, I still have that <laughs> laptop sitting somewhere just in case I need to smash a laptop. Yeah. But that thing's in so many pieces that because of, I think I've trashed it twice in two different videos now. Yeah, right, cool. Uh, yeah. So I'm not so, the only one that saves stuff. Like, I, I got guitars that I'm ready to break for the right, you know, circumstance. Oh, yeah. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. I could never see breaking a good, perfectly good guitar, though, man. <laughs> I just can't see doing that. Sure. Maybe a piece For the right of... reason. Yeah, you pay me enough. Uh, give me a free guitar to smash. <laughs> I, I didn't have or to Paul Stanley could myself. sell it, like his broken ones. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. I played livestock. I forgot that I wasn't a rock star. I did a dive bomb, and, and when I went down... I couldn't replicate this again ever, mm -hmm. but when I came back up, the whammy bar came in between the strings, and I just couldn't do it, and I just did one of these numbers and threw it over my head, and it came down, and the neck snapped and all this, and you know, once the show was over, I realized, I don't have a guitar now. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, oh well, man, I just broke yeah, my guitar. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think That's I still funny. have that somewhere, but... So uh, why don't you introduce the next one? Tell us about a Colin Dead. Colin Dead. <laughs> I wanted to write a a groovy pop tune, and I wrote the entire music thing first. And I was like, okay, it, it has this gap. That's where the hook should be. It needs to be ba ba ba, and that's the title. And I have books. Loose, loose, loose leaves of titles and ideas that have been sitting around for 40 years. And I went through one. I was like, I need, this one doesn't fit, this one doesn't fit. And just went through pages and pages and pages of titles that just did not fit. I'm like, this needs to be a three-word title. 
Call in dead. I'm gonna call in dead. That's it. <laughs> that was it because nothing else would fit there. And then I based the rest of the song about, you know, making up excuses to not go to work and you just <laughs> just pulled out. Yeah, call my in dog dead. ate my homework. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, I love that. Uh, so uh, it's a lyric video. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Panic fire. Call in dead. playing with your mic, Gary. Listen to you. There's that a time and a place to do that, and this is not it. <laughs> no, <laughs> look away. <laughs> so, you know, coming up on, on the next couple of shows, I mean, we... Actually, first, before you get to that, Gary, 
Thanks for being here, brother. Thanks for Thank having me. Thank you. Thanks coming for putting up with me. I love you all. <laughs> love having up with you here. Us. Love you as well, my friend. <laughs> And uh, thank you to Bake More Pies, of course, for having us here in the studio as always. Thank you, they Cord. An awesome place. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Cords, your lovely wife, and everybody that works here. Just fantastic people. We appreciate you. If you guys are looking for a cool place to do some videos and, and get some marketing for your company, check out bakemorepies.com and uh, contact them. And now you can plug the next show. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next show, coming up February 5th, we have... Uh, uh, Sean Chain, uh, singer of Sister Kill Cycle, he'll be in the studio uh, with us and talking about music. We'll be playing uh, videos. Uh, also on uh, the 12th, we have singer, dancer, model, and American Idol con uh, contestant, mm -hmm. Zai. Zai. She'll, she'll be our guest. So Lovely be sure lady. To, sure Great to get attitude. to both of those. She's really, really cool. You're going to enjoy that for sure. And uh, be sure to visit our website at thesoundeffectshow.com where you can see previous shows and find out what's going on and what's coming up with the show on the show calendar. And while you're there, be sure to click on the links to visit our social media pages and add us, like us, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate everybody out there, and we will see you next week on our next show.